Okay, so thank you very much everyone for joining us. Um, we have a panel of people here in UPIC in Plymouth, University of Plymouth International College, and we'll all introduce ourselves briefly in a moment. Um, thanks also to the students who've joined us. It's great you've joined us live because you get the chance to interact and ask questions, um, but we'll also record the session so we can share it with um, other students who maybe were not available to join us uh, in live time. So to start with the introductions, my name is Tim, Tim Gutzel. I'm the Director of Marketing and Admissions at University of Plymouth International College. And then you can see on your screen three people in the room together, appropriately socially distanced. Um, and I'll pass over to them to introduce themselves. Hi there, good morning guys. My name is Toby. Um, I'm the Student Experience Officer at uh, UPIC, University of Plymouth International College. I deal with everything from your app first application, hopefully, to when you graduate and you join us. And I'm Bev Mella, one of the tutors. I teach interactive learning skills and communication and also the principles of ICT module. I'm uh, Dr. Joe Jones. I am the head of teaching learning here and I'm responsible for the quality of your education. And Peter? Yes, and despite what it says on my screen here, I am not Fiona. <laughs> I am Peter McDonald. I'm the College Director and Principal of UPIC. Great, thanks everybody. Uh, we've got a kind of agenda to take us through the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so, or longer if you have more questions to ask. But we were going to start by asking Dave to give us a, an introduction to how we're teaching now in these unusual times of COVID. So what teaching looks like, what it's like to be a student with us at the moment. And also to give you, it's a term we use often, blended learning, but we wanted Dave also to give everyone an introduction to just what we mean by blended learning. So over to you, Dave. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, currently at the moment, we are teaching online and in the classroom. So if you do join us in um, January, you'll have the opportunity to come into a class and we talk face to face with uh, people like Beth. But also, if you wish, you can do everything on, online as well. Um, there is no real difference between the two, between the engagement that you receive and the teaching you receive. Um, you'll get the same opportunities uh, through, through both. Um, really, it works very well. We've been doing it now for 12 weeks. And um, the students we have here are enjoying it. Um, both those who come to the classroom and those who, who remain online. Uh, and you can choose to do both. If you wish to come in for one class and then be online for the next, that is up, that is up to you. We can, we can accommodate your wishes on, on that. Um, Beth, do you want to give some insight into how you actually work? Yes, I, I come into college every day to do my teaching face-to-face -face, and I have students that come in, three or four students that regularly come in, and the rest of the class are online. Whether you come in or you stay at home and zoom in, it's the same lesson. And the lessons are recorded as well. So um, while we're conducting the lesson, you can ask questions. You can see the students that are in the classroom. You can see me. I can see you if you have your camera on. And obviously I can see the students that are in front of me in the classroom. And we can ask each other questions and um, you know, it's, uh, it, it runs very smoothly. For those students that come in, I think they say that they have a, a good experience because they're able to actually interact face-to-face -face properly with other students and with me. But uh, saying that, being at home, working on Zoom, as I said, you, you get the same lesson, the same opportunities. So inside the classroom or outside, um, we, we work well together and, and the lessons run, run very efficiently. Uh, Fiona is actually one of our, one of our students um, here at UK and she can give us um, a perspective from, from a student point of view. Fiona, would you like to uh, come in and uh, discuss how it feels to be a student on the receiving end of the learning journey? You're on you. Sorry, I didn't really get that, Dave. <laughs> 
Um, you are on the receiving end of blended learning uh, from, from the university and, and, and from us. How, how, how is it working for you? The online, um, yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's very nice to um, be in a classroom, but it's also very nice to have online classes because of the recording you can uh, look back on things that that have that have been set in the in the lecture and things that you want to go over again so that's really nice um, but yeah it's of course it's really nice to have that that face-to-face -face contact but there's a good balance I think they do try to do everything to get you to get to be able to to do both. Fantastic. Um, my name is Toby, just, just as I said initially. So I'm the student experience officer. So what that essentially means is I deal with your whole journey while studying with us at the University of Plymouth International College and eventually the University of Plymouth. So um, from the first day that you probably um, heard about UPIC from either your agents or the research you did on the website, uh, you will be interacting with a few of our colleagues from the admissions coordinator and then eventually to myself when you arrive or choose to come and study with us in January, for example. Um, I plan and organize the orientation event. I do the enrollments with, along with my fellow colleagues here, get the right data, help you out with any accommodation issues that you may have or any queries you have about traveling during the airport meet and greet service. Um, if you are at home, you still receive the same level of service. So should you choose to study online, you still get all the services that Fiona receives and the other students. Uh, that's from uh, student letters, if you wanted to open a bank account, um, any other documents you need to improve your experience as a student here, I will be involved in. But like I said, I'm the first port of call, but either one of us in the college can all help and try and meet the demands that you put forward for us. Bev, can I ask you a question? So, so what do you do? In, uh, so teaching in this different way of a smaller number of students in the classroom and more students online, what do you do to make sure students are in, as engaged in the teaching and the learning as they would previously have been when they were all in the classroom? So when students are online, how, how, yeah, how do you get them engaged in the teaching? Um the same as I would in the classroom, asking them questions. Um, so if, um, if I'm demonstrating or explaining something, I would ask for feedback from students and they can either do that with their camera on and responding to me or they can do it via the chat function of um, Zoom. But I also, because I like students working in pairs and in groups, I use the breakout rooms in Zoom so that I have students working together. And in fact, this, um, this semester, I, um, our students were expected to do group presentations in ILS. <clears throat> and that worked very well, whether they were in the classroom or at home on Zoom, they were still able to work really well in groups and put forward a group presentation, which they did last week, and they all did fantastic well. So for the students themselves, whether they're here in Plymouth, whether they're in the classroom or they're at home, they can still interact with each other. They can work together on a project and they can present that together in, in a good way. So getting them engaged, all of my students this, um, you know, were really, really engaged and focused in, in their learning. Um, so not a problem. Sorry, started talking on mute there, Dave. I was going to ask, um, how do you feel this has impacted on the performance of our students? So studying in this, this different way? Um, I, think, I think the students have adapted extremely well uh, to this. Um, it, it was obviously difficult when we, when we started because it was, it was so, so quick. But they really adapted well, and, and to be fair with you, we've seen high levels of attendance, high levels of engagement. Uh, we've seen high, high levels of uh, as, as students passing the, um, the uh, midterm exam modules. 
So in, in, in terms of being able to cope with the online slash based blended approach, um, the students have adapted really, really well, as have, as have all the staff here. Yeah. I was, and and, and if anything, we've, we've, we've seen an increase in, in achievement. I was a bit concerned that um, those students in um, further, further east, in Hong Kong or China, for example, that the, the attendance wouldn't be so good because of the time difference. And I imagine that a lot of them would be relying on the recordings, the Zoom recordings, to catch up on lessons, but it hasn't been a problem. I've had almost 100% attendance for most of my lessons, including those students where there is a big time difference. That's fantastic. Are you using any new technology to help you teach in this way? And, and from a student's perspective, do you find that they're all able to access enough internet bandwidth and the right technology to, to engage with teaching? I think, um, yeah, there are, there are some connectivity issues with some students from time to time um, when they're at home, because obviously, you know, if their internet goes down, then, and I have had um, one or two students who are actually in Plymouth and the fire alarm keeps going off in their building. So um, that's interrupted uh, their learning, but, no, and as for the equipment that we use, I think um, Zoom, Zoom works very well on the whole for all of us. Some students don't have access perhaps to their camera function, and that isn't a problem because they can still access all of the information, whether they're on their mobile phone or whether they're on a laptop. It, it's not a problem accessing information. Um, <clears throat> because I'm in the classroom and uh, I have two cameras, I have one pointed at me and at the whiteboard that I'm using, or I can use the Zoom whiteboard, but whatever I'm doing in the classroom, students can see that. So I can use a, a, the electronic whiteboard or I can use a physical whiteboard. It makes no difference. And students can actually write on the same, if I'm using the electronic whiteboard, they can also participate um, and use the same whiteboard. We can share whiteboards and share information and and activities. So it works well. Yeah, I think I think also um, uh, the parent being able to ask the question with some extra um, engagement uh, technique activity type of things like what we call HP5 mm -hmm. is something which is available to our tutors, which enables uh, students to do things at home and still be fully engaged. Uh, so, so there's lots, lots of um, abilities there and technology available to us and uh, the do use the range of, of that to keep students engaged, not just in the classroom, because we always remember that we will be asking students to do things at home, kind of prepare things, and uh, through the Moodle sites, through, uh, through that um, content on the Moodle sites, students can be engaged equally well through there as they are in the, in the classroom as well. I have to say I was a little bit um, concerned that students for my INSC module and for any module, they do have to do research and not having access to a physical library um, could, could be an issue. But in fact, all students have access to the university electronic library, Primo. And so doing any of their assignments is not a problem at all. They can access all of the latest um, up-to-date journals. All of the books are available online, most of the books. Um, of course, there's Google Scholar as well, which they can access generally. Uh, so researching for assignments is, is not an issue. How are you finding that, Fiona? Uh, you are researching for assignments currently in your first year. Um, yeah, it's uh, very easy to access all information that you need for your uh, for your assignments. Uh, so that's really good. The teachers are also really, um, uh, well, they were really that keen to help you um, get all the information that you need. So you just need to ask, and they, I promise you, they will uh, they will help you uh, in in every way. It's been, uh, yeah, and that way is really good teachers but also the panel like the, the people in the office um 
that they will all help you. So if you have any any questions, you can ask them, and I promise you, they will help you really well. Thank you so, so much, Donna. And to, just to add to Dave and Bev's uh, points there, all these services are available online. So myself and Dave uh, set you up uh, with the services available at the university. So although you're studying at the International College, you have all the same benefits as any student that would be here. So in actual fact, you're not losing out on anything. Uh, we help you set up your library account so you can do your research. Um, Dave mentioned access. I'm not too sure whether you're aware of that, but that is the site where you get access to your timetable, where you email and contact us and where you can have various information being passed across to any device that you have. Um, we ask students to use their laptop rather than their phones so we can enhance the communication and increase engagement so you're proper enjoying from the student experience. Toby, do you want to say a little bit more about the kind of measures that we're taking in the building here? So for the, the staff and students who are here, what we're, what we're doing around COVID and, you know, maybe even a little bit about the university's COVID testing that it's offering now? Absolutely. So this week, um, for students who are currently studying with us, uh, there was local testing involved for students who wish to return home over Christmas. So the university are being very um, adapting to the constant um, changing environment that we're in at the moment due to coronavirus. In the college for students who come in face to face, um, as Bev and Dave have mentioned, there's a limited amount of students that are allowed into a classroom at one point. Um, all this, um, the, these lectures and these classes are recorded and uploaded to the Moodle site where you get access to the content available. In regards to the procedures that we put in place for coronavirus, uh, every student and person that comes into the building has to sign in. I then scan and take those, um, that information and if there is a breakout where somebody has been around someone with coronavirus, we are able to effectively communicate that across so we can self-isolate. We are all within uh, government guidelines. There are track and trace barcodes inside every classroom and the building where you come in so you can easily scan on what is called the COVID-19 NHS app uh, to track and trace and ensure that we are taking the right safety measures. Um, in each classroom, there, each classroom is uh, cleaned with uh, some um, detergent and uh, the right products after each session. Uh, there are also um, hand sanitary gels in each classroom and also, although you, you can see us seated this way, each um, desk is put in a, the right way to ensure that we are within the guidelines. Thanks, Toby. That's really helpful. I think these are, are very strange and unusual times, um, but I think it's great how we've managed to keep on working through this and, and effectively to stay open and the university campus is open. Things are different, um, but I guess Fiona's made a decision to start now rather than wait until post-COVID times. Are you still happy you made the right decision in getting started, Fiona, even though the experience has inevitably been rather different from how it might have been without COVID? Well, I started last year. I was in foundation last year. Ah, I see, of course. <clears throat> but um, I think there's uh, the positive side is that you can you're getting eased into it and you can look back on the lectures that you you have but i think either way um everybody is really helpful and they guide you really well so i don't think it it really matters um and i i don't regret it i don't regret it at all <laughs> great thank you um I could ask questions all day, but I know we've got some students, some prospective students on the call. Uh, so Adeline, the others, are there any questions you would like to ask uh, of Fiona or the, the panel members? Feel free to um, put it into the chat function if you'd like and I can read it out and then we can try and answer those questions effectively. Mihai, Adeline, Bala. Maybe while you're think, maybe while you're thinking about that, um, please do feel free to interrupt and to ask any questions you have. But Toby, it might be worth saying a bit more about um, the accommodation options. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, you will be receiving some more information, um, or you may have already, um, about um, a webinar we are having further later on in the week um, about accommodation. But just so you're aware, there is accommodation available um, in Plymouth through our provider known as Clever Student Lets. Um, if you've had a look on our website, you will have you will see the information for booking accommodation. Those that email after you've booked accommodation comes through to myself and is passed on to our accommodation provider. So we try and meet the demands that you have. Um, the services, um, all our accommodation providers' rooms are all um, COVID-19 compliant in the sense. So everything has been properly cleaned before students move in. Um, there's good dialogue between ourselves and the university as well as the provider. Uh, so there's good interactions. We try and meet all the demands that you may have. Um, there's still quite a few different types of um, accommodation available from one bedroom apartments to studio flats to um, a room in a shared house. In regards to self-isolating when you arrive into the UK, uh, we have put, um, we've created a whole procedure for that. We will send you some documentation as well as pre-departure information with, which provides you with all the details of what to do when you arrive and how long you have to self-isolate for. I think we just received a question. Um, yeah, so in regards to accommodation, you've, you will receive further information later on this week. But if you have any queries at all, feel free to drop me a message. I shall share, we shall share all our details with you after this webinar. So yes, yeah, so we do have a question. Yeah. When will we receive a structure for the academic year, including breaks at St. Mihai Bogdan Marine? So maybe one for you, Dave? Um, yeah, uh, for, uh, for next year, we will start enrolling the new students on the 18th of January uh, during that week, and we'll start teaching from the break then. Uh, your breaks will be from around mid-April? Yeah, correct. So the breaks will, so if you, depending on what um, program you're studying, most of the ones that start in January are for two semesters. Uh, the first semester starts from January to April and the second semester starts from May to August. Um, Dave mentioned the orientation week as the start date. That's our official orientation program. During this orientation program, you get to have several talks with myself and a few of the panelists, Peter especially, uh, who introduces you to the way of life, um, Eric, and what requirements we need from you as a student when you arrive. So everything around studies with your lecturers like Bev and everything regarding your interactions with us as the college. So the various services available at the university. We tend to have a gentleman from the students union who happens to be a progressed and alumni student from the college. And in some cases we get Fiona to come over and just give some kind of induction to, to express her experience with us in the college. Um, that session runs for a whole week, at which at the end of that, you get your timetable for your classes, which should be starting on the 25th, I believe. This runs for 12 weeks of academic study, followed by an exam week. Upon this, you tend to have about a month break in between semesters, and then that moves on to the next semester, which the whole process starts again. Yeah, and, then, and then that final semester um, starts in May, ends in mid-August. And again, you'll have about a month or so off um, before returning to us on uh, whatever program by the year you, you come in on um, in the following September. And, and again, it's 12 weeks semesters followed by about three or four weeks off in the middle. I hope we answer your question, Mihai. I think we have a second question, Tim. Do you, would you like me to read it out? Yeah, go on, go ahead. On my offer, on um, this is from Balao. Um, on my offer on January intake of Plymouth University, there is this foundation course before the semester. May I know what are these foundation course and will we have any assignments after which we can enter a semester? Um, so, so I guess that question really is about what is a foundation course? How does it best prepare you for university and going on to the degree and, and how is it assessed? Correct, yes, I believe so. Would you, would you like to answer that one or would you like me... Um, well, a, a, a foundation course gives you the grounding uh, to be able to go into a fresh year, year degree. And it depends what foundation course you're coming on to, Palau. Um, you don't say. Because um, we do foundations in science and business and computing and engineering. 
and it gives you that foundation so you come up to the same level as a UK A level student. Yeah, uh, which gives you the ability that when you go into your first year of your degree course, you're, you're not behind the UK students. And in fact, in a number of ways you're ahead of them in, 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 your, in your preparation skills and your knowledge. Uh, does, that, does that answer your question? Um, perhaps you can put up what foundation you're coming on to and I'll be able to target the answer a little bit better. Um, I could add something to that. I think I feel really uh, confident now in university or more confident than I, I felt when I started foundation year. I was nervous. I was thinking, oh, can I do this? Um, because of the whole foundation year, they really prepared me for university. So now that I'm there, I can see that I have like a little bit of a head start uh, in writing um, uh, and some of the courses they like, for instance, we have chemistry and some people were a bit nervous, like, oh, what's all of this? I haven't done it in a few years. And whereas we foundation year students feel much more confident, like, oh, we've done that last year. I, I can do this. So and thinking that way will really, it really prepares you very well for, for university. And just to give you that stepping stone, that foundation course is basically the step up you have before you start your first year at the university. So it's essentially what we provide as the international college. It runs uh, on average, sometimes it runs between eight months and 12 months, depending on the individual course. So like Dave mentioned, if you can tell us what course or foundation we've offered you, we may be able to um, provide you with some more information in-depth information. Bala? Um, I had gotten an offer for international um, tourism management. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you'll do, what, what you'll do with the foundation then is your, your, your first semester, you will come to us in January and, and you will have that. Mm -hmm. One of the first uh, uh, the lessons you have. And uh, what, we, what we do, the way we break it down, is you have uh, some preparatory lectures in, in ILS, the Art of Study Skills and ICT, and also you can get some business-based lectures on that. And it's a foundation for you, um, so that you can understand uh, the higher levels of learning that you'll be required to have when you get to, to your first year. Um, so you'll do things like, um, business foundations, you'll do things like academic writing to make sure that you do write at the correct level. And you'll do things to be paid to make sure that you can reference the science correctly. These are all preparatory things to make sure that when you go to first year and also if you do your second year, that you, you can pass everything well and you can come out at the end of it all with a very good degree. And I guess there will be assignments. Um, but we will show you how to do those assignments and we will show you how to get through those assignments. Um, we won't do those assignments for you, <laughs> that will be up to you to produce the work, but we will give you every preparation to be able to achieve them at a very high level. And uh, to just finish off that question, uh, you wanted to find out, like Dave mentioned about the assignments, you do have to pass these assignments to move on to the next module, so each semester um, like I mentioned, there's an exam week at the end of each semester on week 13, after which you've passed these modules, then you move on to the next modules the following semester. So if you start in semester one, you, you pass all those exams, you move on to semester two, depending on whether or not you're doing a lengthier project, so a um, lengthier um, program, you then move on to the semester three. So you do have to move through stages to get across to the university. And that, and that is going to be the same throughout all the years you're at the university, whether you want to be the board of the university or not. You, you have to pass all the course work signs, you have to pass all the um, What we will do is give you the skills to be able to, to pass them. Because then we may do things in a slightly different way than, 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 than you're used to. And we've got to get you used to the UK way of doing things. And, and uh, tutors like that, um, they do that very well. I hope that answers your questions. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, Great. Do, do we have any more questions, Madeline? You haven't had a, you haven't answered the question yet. You're you're welcome to. You don't have to, but feel free if you'd like to. Well, 
Well, maybe while Adeline's thinking, Peter, was there anything you wanted to add from uh, the college director and principal perspective? I think it's really just to add to everything everybody else has said. Um, we've gone to a great deal of trouble in the University of, Tr of Plymouth, as I indeed have all the UK universities, to make the environment as safe as we possibly can uh, for our students and staff during this very difficult period in history uh, of this national, you know, this international pandemic that we're all having to cope with. So, you know, the, the safety measures that have been put in place, uh, the cleanliness that's taking place, the social distancing that's taking place are all designed to be able to provide an environment where you can have some satisfaction and understanding that you can come and study in a safe environment. Um, it, we have to adapt to changing government policy uh, and as lockdowns come in and out of, of place in the country, but we're doing that. We are offering, as you've heard, the option. You really don't feel that you uh, are able to do face-to-face -face studying at the moment. We, there is the option for the online study, uh, and it's as interactive as we can possibly make it. But um, I can assure, just to give you really assurance, that your safety is paramount to us, uh, and we'll do everything we possibly can to keep you safe throughout this difficult period. Thank you so much, Peter. Oh, that's a good one for you, Toby. So are there any societies? If so, how can we get into them? Fantastic question, Mihai. Um, there are over 100 societies at the University of Plymouth Students' Union. Um, the university is still open at the moment, so there are certain functions that aren't physically available, but there are um, various ways that you can connect and get in touch with, the, with these societies. Um, I would advise, hopefully, when this email was sent out regarding this webinar, there are links below um, that should take you to our social platforms. I'd advise you to follow those because those will provide you with updated information from these societies. So hopefully at the end of this, you can hopefully go on and do your own research and see what society you'd like to get involved with. Um, on the 12th of December next week, I will be having the University of Plymouth Student Union president here who will be able to ask and answer, answer those um, direct questions about joining a society or even if you want the opportunity to even create your own society. As mentioned in, earlier in the webinar, we did say that um, students are can benefit from all the services that any stu um, that students are here face to face receive. So you can feel free. There's um, society in uh, video games. There's football societies. There's sporting societies. There's cultural societies. So depending on what background you're from, you're able to join in. And obviously, all these different societies, depending on the students that we're receiving for different intakes. So for if you're coming to study with us in January you can then come in and, you know, get some kind of induction during our orientation week. So we can invite some societies to come and tell you what they're about, um, what kind of services to provide, and also what kind of social activities um, are available. So yes, there, there are loads of societies. Um, it depends on which one you're interested in. And you can get into those uh, societies once you receive your student card. Something yeah, I think, I think, Toby, that's a really important point, isn't it? But all of our students have access to all of the university's facilities, to all of the clubs and societies, uh, to everything the university has to offer. So, and the college is based on the university campus. So when everyone's physically here, um, you step outside the college, you're on the university campus, you're mixing with other students who are maybe doing a bachelor's or a master's or whatever level they're studying at. So you feel, as a UPIC student, you feel immediately a part of the wider university community and you're part of that community. What's okay. The, what, what society were you interested in, Mihai, if, if you don't mind me asking? In the sports society, oh, fantastic! That's great. We've got quite a few sportsmen here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of sports societies, and, and I'd be very surprised that the sport you're interested in is not represented. Whether, whether, whether or not there are actually playing games at the moment is, is another matter because of COVID. But if you want to play football, rugby, tennis, yeah. golf, I mean, what, whatever, whatever sport you're interested in, there, there will be a society, there will be some form of society or sports club available to you. Yeah. 
just to mention that we have to obviously adhere to the government's uh, guidelines around this. So at the moment, there are some sports that are not being able to, um, you know, function at the moment. But hopefully, in the future, or by the time you arrive, everything will be fully on the road. Yeah, operational. Absolutely. Okay, so um, do we have any final questions before we wrap up? While you're just thinking if you have any more questions, I'll just take the opportunity to say thank you to all of the panel members, to Peter, our college director and principal, to, to Fiona, one of our students, to, to Dave Jones, our head of teaching and learning, to Bev, who's one of our tutors, and to Toby, who's our student experience officer. And, and from me as well, from Tim, I'm the Director of Marketing and Admissions here. So, one last chance. Any more questions? If you do think of anything else after the webinar, please feel free to email um, myself, Toby, or, or Tim, and we'd be very happy to answer any questions you have afterwards. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Dave. And thanks, everybody, very much for your time, your attention and your input. It's much appreciated. Um, and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.